This photograph is by Howard Bond of The Manor, a gelatin silver print taken from an 8x10 negative using an unsharp mask. Unsharp masking is a darkroom technique that entails creating a faint positive image taken from the original negative, then sandwiched with the negative and printed together as a single image. This has two benefits. Firstly, it becomes an incredibly sharp image. Second, it changes the contrast of the final print as the mask adds a small amount of density to white areas on the negative, known as high areas. This allows the image to develop longer without blowing out the high areas of the image. This image in particular had such a high range of contrast that Howard's wife Margaret had to assist in printing to strategically cover high areas for portions of the development process. This watercolor painting is by Doris Terwilliger, Meadows resident. It depicts Barton Dam on the Huron River. Doris has taken a number of watercolor and drawing courses with Washtenaw Community College and with esteemed watercolor artist and teacher, Donna Zagoda. Doris's skill with the medium is apparent. Watercolors are notoriously difficult to execute with precision. Doris's control can be seen particularly well in the spray of water on the third waterfall, where she leaves very clean negative space amidst the dark brown ground of the dam structure. Her execution of architectural structure and perspective make for a graphic composition, and the soft pastel colors and dynamic movement of the water creates a lovely softness. These next two watercolor paintings by Edith Maynard exemplify two styles of expression from an artist over time. The first is an abstract view of part of an engine, completed during Edith's residency at Glacier Hills. It represents the way she currently interprets many kinds of industrial and natural shapes. She alters the shapes and uses non-local color extensively to inject her emotions into the piece. Non-local color refers to colors not true to the actual color of the object, in some cases, the apparent color, based on shadows, reflections, and other environmental interference to the appearance of the object, or in this case, colors taken from the artist's imagination. The second painting is an older work by Edith and represents her artistic art interpretation of the world at that point in her life. It emphasizes the shapes of everyday objects interpreted emotionally with non-local color. This quilt was made by Gretchen Jackson of the Villas. The fabric is all hand dyed. 
She entered it in a quilting show in Texas that had the theme of spring, and it won first prize. The judge's only critique was that it didn't look like spring to them. The trees were bare, and there was still snow on the ground. Jackson asked them if they'd ever seen a Michigan spring before. They hadn't. If they had, they'd known that this is what it looks like. Next is a colored pencil piece by Sarah Newman of The Manor. Titled The Bridge, it depicts an up-close view of the bridge of her cello, which she has played for many years. Sarah works from photographs when creating a colored pencil piece, as it involves hours of thin applications of the pencil. This process allows for the striking, vivid colors and adds to the overall abstraction and whimsy of the unusual vantage of the instrument. Before picking up colored pencils following her retirement in 1996, Sarah got much practice in drawing, doing anatomy and neuroanatomy sketches on the blackboard and on paper for the medical students she taught at the University of Michigan Medical School. Lee Hibbs of the Meadows shares a linoleum print done in 1987. The image was hand-carved into a block of linoleum based on original photographs taken by Hibbs at the Indiana Dunes. The block was then brayed with ink and applied to paper to create the impression. This piece is an artist's print, meaning that Hibbs did not create an edition of multiple prints and only took this one impression. The next two works are both by Don Postema of the Meadows. The first is a drawing of a street in the Bavarian town of Rotenberg op der Taube. Pictured here is a photograph of the clock tower arch captured by Don. The second piece, Portrait of a Fellow Art Student, was done in a drawing course in 1977. The assignment was to partner with another student in the class and create a portrait of them. Don executed the piece in Conte Crayon, a medium that is essentially a very hard pencil. It's made of a mixture of graphite and clay and is similar in appearance to pastels. Unlike pastels, however, the Conte Crayon produces very little dust and can be used for much finer lines. 
Another benefit is that it is easily erased, a technique Don embraced as he coated the entirety of the paper in contact crayon and used an eraser to lift away the pigment and allow the figure to emerge. Marlene Howe of the Villas shares two three-dimensional works, both made in 1974. The first is a slab-built square vase, meaning the clay was rolled flat into slabs, trimmed to size, and then seamed together to create the clean, rectangular shape of the piece. The piece was glazed and fired. Making it particularly compelling is the use of texture, variance in color, and asymmetry to give the piece a strong organic character. The second is another slab-built piece, this time a sun-type face on a square base. The expressive nature of the face, particularly through the eyebrows and mouth, make it a particularly fun and engaging piece, surely open to many different interpretations. Marlene is also a veteran quilter and has spent many years creating quilts of every size, color, and technique imaginable. We are fortunate enough to have a piece in this exhibition by Manor resident Sharon Doheny, who recently passed away. She submitted this pencil and ink drawing to the show, and shortly before her passing, shared its story with me. It's titled Amsterdam, and depicts a canal scene. This drawing was done in 2017, an imagined composite based on her recollections of a prior trip to Amsterdam, and a wall calendar featuring photographs taken around the city. Those familiar with Sharon's work will recognize her distinct sense of whimsy in the drawing. She created many colorful and playful collage and multimedia works. It's a pleasure to commemorate her life and art in this show.